All right, let's pop into our first article, which is about microchips for body monitoring. Um, it's research coming out of Columbia University, led by Professor Ken Shepard and his PhD student, Chen Shi. Um, uh, sorry, before we move forward, I, I got to get a, get this off my chest. This is the question that everyone listening wants to know. How is this thing implanted? All right. <laughs> I'm going to say it, but don't get scared. These microchips have been implanted using hypodermic needles, just like the vaccine. But I want to be clear. The COVID-19 vaccine does not have any microchips in it, and these things are safe. So it's not about tracking your internet history or your political affiliation, and Bill Gates isn't going to come running after you. This is about clinical applications using microchips, you know, for medical applications. So let's get that out of the way. I, I got to say, I'm, I'm sure the tech is promising, and I'm, I'm excited to learn about it, but this is one of those moments where you got to read the room. Come on now, yeah, like, read, this is not the time. Read the room, Columbia. <laughs> but seriously, this is a big, interesting use of technology, so let's dive into it. Okay. Implanted electronics are very, very useful for medical applications. Um, they can be used for all sorts of things like measuring temperature, blood pressure, blood sugar, blood oxygen levels, respiration, all sorts of clinical monitoring applications, just like all the sensors that they hook up to you in your body. Right. There's a less invasive way in doing it is using a small microchip. Um, one of the biggest hurdles to using these microchips so far is that these implanted electronics don't use space very wisely. So the vo okay. they're not very volume efficient. So they're kind of bulky. They require multiple sets of chips, uh, external packaging that's waterproof, the wires, transducers, and a battery. Basically, what this team from Columbia did is like they said, let's strip away everything that's non-essential. Let's just do a quick demonstration of what we can to make the smallest possible microchip in the world. And that's what they did. So they Wait, made. Sorry. Uh, go ahead. Finish up. And then I'll ask my question. Well, they made this microchip that's the size of a grain of table salt to okay. measure temperature inside the body. Okay. So you said no battery, right? no battery how, how's it powered is it like passively powered yeah it's, it's so the microchip itself is passive and okay. it becomes powered using an external power source so there are devices that have done something similar in in the past and actually for both you and i've done some research on some of it powering devices using rfid so you yeah, yeah, yeah emit electromagnetic waves and the power that's transferred through the air is the way that they wirelessly power a device so they looked at using RFID for this application, but again, mm -hmm. they're going to make the smallest thing possible. And they achieved it. They made the smallest uh, chip as a system in the world. Um, but they couldn't do that with RFID because the wavelengths were too big. They would have needed an antenna that's larger than the actual device itself. Right. So they went back to the drawing board and they thought about how, how can you transfer power wirelessly and transfer data wirelessly? And the mechanism they ended up deciding on was using ultrasound waves. So... Super short wavelength, super high frequency uh, sound waves being sent through the body and used to power these little microchips using a piezoelectric transducer. So w with these sensor setups, whether it's RFID or ultrasonic, you always have the passive sensor. In this case, it's the microchip. And then you have the unit that's actually sending a signal and then getting a signal and then analyzing what's going on. So you still need to have a reader of some sort, right? And exactly. In this case, is, is the reader like some, I don't know, is it like something you can put on your body, like an air tag, or like, what does that apparatus look like? In their testing applications, the mm -hmm. reader that you're talking about is just a typical ultrasonic probe that like you see, okay. you know, when you get an ultrasound reading on like to see something inside your body, they put the little transducer gel on there and hold the probe, you know, it's no bigger than like I don't know, a marker. That, that's about the size of the probe that they were using in this case. Um, they talked about potentially designing their own ultrasound probe in the future for this type of application, but for now, they've been able to use one normal clinical use ultrasonic probe. Um, okay. And they basically have this little microchip that's the size of a grain of salt. They inject it inside the body and using a little oscillator on there, basically that changes the frequency at which it vibrates depending on the temperature, they're able to use this ultrasonic probe to both power the device and then 
read the signal coming back from the little tiny device and tell what the temperature is inside the body with relative accuracy. So so they're, they're reading temperature data, and that, that's the main thing they're doing right now, right? Yeah, they're not skimming credit card numbers or looking for what you like on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm thankful for that, you know, and knowing that if Bill Gates wanted that, and any information about my body, he'd have to run after me with an ultrasonic scanner. That, that makes me feel better. But what I was curious about is like, can you read other data, like other health information? Maybe not right now, but like down the road. Yeah. So the temperature was the easiest one for them to implement because they only needed this small oscillator okay. uh, temperature sensor. They say, you know, in the future, as these systems get more complex, there's the ability to look at kind of the list that I mentioned before, blood pressure, blood sugar, blood oxygen levels, those are the main ones. I think it would be really, really cool for blood sugar to think like, you don't have to prick your finger anymore. All you have to do is hold up a little reader to the spot in your arm where you've implemented this microchip and you can tell your blood sugar at, you know, at any point throughout the day completely non-invasively. So and that's something that I'm looking forward to. Just to clarify, that's like with no modifications to the chip itself, right? Like is yeah. it just as is? Gotcha. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. And, and it's uh, it's... Even just the temperature, even though it seems like just a demonstration, it's actually got some applications right away for cancer treatment, uh, for ultrasonic you know, type of muscle and nerve stimulation. It's really useful, and I'm excited to see where this goes, and I'm actually learning more about it. I'm less scared about getting microchipped because I know that these have you know, good clinical applications, and they can't actually track me down and stalk me like a lot of people are worried about. Well, the, the funny thing with the microchip is like, I, I know we kind of joke about like people think they're getting implanted with the microchips with the vaccines, but in, in certain places, like, I don't know if you remember, but Venmo started releasing these chips you could like put in the webbing of your hand. I think it was in Sweden, someplace in Europe. And instead of having to carry, you know, a credit card or your phone around, you could kind of swipe your hand and you could pay with your account. So some people are like pretty cool with having little chips inside of them if it means they're getting some sort of utility out of it. And for this, especially like if down the line, it means real time health monitoring, I could see the benefits. I could even see myself voluntarily signing up for one. So great yeah. research coming out of Columbia. I Again, the timing maybe could have been better, but <laughs> you shouldn't be holding back great research for anything.